Hello scientists, didn't see you there. Today, we're gonna to be making DNA bracelets. DNA is a topic that we can all relate to. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and it's why you have the color eyes that you have, it's why your nose is shaped the way it is. Basically, it's kind of like ingredients, and we all have these ingredients, but we have a different recipe. So, make sure you pay attention throughout the video because we'll be sharing some very cool facts about what DNA is and what it does. For this activity, you only need two supplies. Some string and some beads. First, we need to have a lesson in DNA base pairing. DNA is made up of four different bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Due to the chemical shape of these building blocks, they always pair together a certain way, fitting together like puzzle pieces and only allowing the correct pairings to come together. A with T and G with C. Next comes arguably the coolest part of this whole experiment. You might be looking at this and thinking, what in the world is that? Well, scientists, it's time to pick which DNA sequence we want to create. Pause the video if you need to, to see which DNA sequence you'd like to recreate with your bracelet. You might see that the colors you chose are different than the colors in the sequence, but that's totally fine. As long as you've chosen your designated base pairs, you're all good and ready to start creating once you choose your strand. Wanna know a cool fact? Human beings share close to 99% of our DNA with chimpanzees, which makes them our closest living relatives. Think about that next time you visit a zoo. You can wave to your distant cousin in the primate exhibit. Once you've decided on a DNA sequence that you want to reconstruct, it's time to start making our bracelet. Next, we're going to take some elastic string and cut two pieces that are roughly 30 centimeters in length. You want to make sure it'll fit on your wrist comfortably, since after all, it is a bracelet. The black string I'm using represents the two strands of DNA that make up the double helix. Did you know that if you unwound and linked together the DNA strands in one of your cells, it would be about six feet long? And because we have hundreds of trillions of cells in our body, that means our DNA would be long enough to stretch from the sun and back 600 times. Next, what we'll need to do is tie a knot at the end of each string, about five centimeters from the end. Once we've done that, we'll need to tie the two strings or strands together. You might be wondering, where do we get our DNA or the recipe for us from? Well, we get it from our parents who pass on their unique genetic recipe to us. And humans aren't the only organisms that have DNA, as I'm sure you guys noticed when we were picking our sequences. Every living organism has DNA, including the teeniest, tiniest bacteria you can only see with a microscope. Bacteria have also been around way longer than humans. We're relatively new here, believe it or not. Alrighty, it's finally time for us to start threading our bases onto our double helix, but first let's have a refresher on our base pairing rules. I mentioned earlier that I was designating purple for adenine, white for cytosine, yellow for guanine, and green for thiamine. So that means when I thread on an adenine, I'll need to add a green on the opposite side of the helix. The same goes for cytosine. When I thread on a cytosine, I'll need to thread on a guanine or a yellow bead on the opposite side. So pause the video for just a second if you need to refresh yourself on these pairing rules. Once you're comfortable enough with the pairing rules, it's time to start constructing your helix. I've chosen to construct the DNA strand for the spitting cobra because snakes are my favorite animal. Cool fact about snakes, their ancestors used to have legs. A mutation, or change in the base pairing that causes genetic messages to change, led to the legless reptiles that we know today. Once we have our sequence constructed, we're going to repeat the knot tying step. Be careful when doing this, otherwise your entire sequence might unravel. One of my favorite facts to share about DNA is that we have a special kind of DNA inside of our cells called mitochondrial DNA. And guess what? We only inherit this kind of DNA from our mom, with a few very rare exceptions. Mitochondrial DNA is passed down from generation to generation, and if we traced back all of our mitochondrial DNA, humans theoretically have a common ancestor. For the final step, we're going to tie the knotted ends together, creating a double helix. Mine ended up pretty small. I think I may have to convert mine to a DNA keychain or maybe a scrunchie. Congrats, scientists. You've constructed your very own DNA sequence. 
Scientists, I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news is we are done with today's activity. The bad news is I have no idea where I put my DNA bracelet. So I guess I'll find it eventually. Make sure you stay tuned on NICE's website. We have plenty of awesome at-home activities coming your way.